finally an affordable virus <laughs> therapy, uh, which, which was good news yesterday. How much of a game changer is this for the illness? I think everyone's really excited to see the data coming in on um, on the drug. I mean, I think anything we can add to our toolkit is huge, but something that can be um, widely distributed, widely used, uh, and improves mortality is absolutely huge. Does it mean that we could find similar drugs that can help in people that are not so critically ill? I mean, how much of a breakthrough, you know, is this, Lauren? This is a reliable study over, I think, many countries with many patients. Yeah, I think we want to definitely see the data, um, look at more data around this drug and better understand how we can use it in places where um, mortality is lower. These these patients who are less ill are, are where we want to see more work going forward. And I, I think this is absolutely promising. Um, we'd like to see the death rate come down and, and in some of these studies and have a lower mortality rate to better understand how the impact is on the um, less ill patients. Um, Lauren, what can you tell us about what's going on in Beijing? So we understand that authorities are trying to, you know, contain this possible second wave of the virus without really sealing off the city. Is this a second wave? Where does it, is it the same virus that's been introduced or has it changed at all? Yeah, it looks like it is the same virus, and I think what we're seeing is a second wave in the city after um, restrictions were eased. So the government's going to have to work hard to re-implement restrictions. Um, it'll be a snapshot for us, you know, as we're seeing our own in uptick in a lot of states to better understand how we can re-implement restrictions to reduce um, second wave impacts. Yeah, what is the situation in the United States? So we're seeing new spikes. There are hot spots. What can you tell us about why, you know, they're in certain states and not others? Yeah, I, I think a lot of it tracks with um, easing of restrictions. We're still looking at what some of the data is coming in, but we know that 18 states are having um, pretty significant upticks um, and 22 states are on the downward trend. Um, several states across the country do have steady numbers, but, um, you know, at there are restrictions that were eased up in late May and early June, and, and I think we're seeing the impact of that um, being a little too cavalier with those easing, uh, easing of those restrictions. If the six U.S. states that you mention are going back to some sort of lockdown <clears throat> or at least tracking and tracing, can they get a handle on it pretty quickly? I think there's potential. I mean, so, you know, these developments in drugs and things like that, they, they don't actually stop outbreaks. They improve the outcomes of patients. So the, the things that you mentioned, contact tracing, um, identifying, testing, uh, putting lock -ins, lockdowns back in place if necessary are the key tools that we have right now until we develop a vaccine. So um, I, I think we, we know that they work and we've seen a lot of data from early outbreaks in other countries and even here in the U.S. And so um, knowing when we really do have to pull a trigger and, and put the restrictions back in place is absolutely huge. Um, Lauren, I've heard everything from the virus is mutating to in it to the you know one of the top professors saying actually they got rid of the virus. Where are we on this virus? Like, what do we actually know? We haven't actually seen a lot of mutation, which I think is good. It is promising for better understanding how therapeutics and how um, spread happens and, and how we can use vaccines. Um, I, I think what we know is that it, it is transmissible um, and it does cause severe disease in a lot of people who get it. So, so we can use the tools that we have that we know will help ease transmission, which is social distancing, which is good hand hygiene, which is masking, um, to protect us. But as far as the virus itself, I think we're still learning a ton about it. I mean, there, there's so much science that's being done every day, and yet we still have so much to learn.